live apart and that he will know the reason when he's older. He's accepted that. As for your lordship, he already thinks of you as a wonder of generosity. He comes prepared to love you. Oh, woman's cleverer than I thought. It's no wonder she won't be bought off. She's after the greater prize. My lord, if you will allow the liberty, I must tell you that you will succeed better with the boy if you do not speak slightingly of his mother. Oh, poo, poo, I shall say what I like. Youngest is only 11 years old. He has spent those years at his mother's side. She has all his affection. We've reached the gates of the park, my lord. Hi there. Welcome, my lord. God bless your pretty face. Why, thank you. Wasn't she nice? I guess she thinks she knows me. How is grandfather today, Mr. Havisham? I'll bet he's a little nervous right now. I know I am. I guess we'll just have to help each other over our nerves, won't we? I guess... I suppose you will. This is Farnsworth, my lord. He is the butler here. It is his responsibility to see that Dorincourt Castle runs smoothly. Gee, I'd say that must take some doing, Mr. Farnsworth. May I be the first to welcome you, my lord? Oh, you sure may. Thank you, Mr. Farnsworth. Uh, won't you come in, my lord? Well, hi there, everybody. I'm pleased to know you. <laughs> This is Mrs. Mellon, my lord. She is the housekeeper. I should know your lordship anywhere. You have your father's face and his way. I'm glad to hear it, Mrs. Mellon. Though, some people say I'm a lot like Dearest, too. Dearest, my lord. Oh, my mother, ma'am. It's what my father used to call her. And after he... After he died, I thought I'd do the same. So she wouldn't feel so lonely, you see. I do, my lord. His Lordship's waiting for Lord Fauntleroy in the library, sir. Go with Thomas, my Lord. He will take you to your grandfather. I'll take your hat, my Lord. Hi. 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 Heathcliff. Heathcliff, come back here, sir. Are you the Earl? If you are, then I'm your grandson. You know, the one that Mr. Havisham brought. I'm glad to know you. Oh. So you're glad to know me, are you? Oh, yes, sir. Very. I guess I've been thinking about you ever since New York. I kept wondering what you'd look like, if you'd be like my father, you know. Am I? No, sir. So you're disappointed, I suppose? Oh, no, sir. I'd like however you looked. I guess you always like the way your relations look, 
You know how it is. I don't know that I do. Well, any boy would love a grandfather who's been as kind as you have, giving me that money and all. Oh, yes, the money. You liked that, did you? I should say I did. Why, I'd like to know what Dick would have done without it, for starters. Dick? My friend Dick, who cleans boots. When I bought him a new stall, he doubled his business right away. He's having a chair that does it. His customers can sit down now. That's what made the difference. Oh, yes, I do see. And then there's Mr. Hobbs. Mr. Hobbs? The grocer at the end of our street. I bought him a gold watch. Why, I reckon he's just about the proudest man in New York. And it's all thanks to you. How gratifying. Oh, wait. Let me show you what Dick gave me as we left. You can see how much that stall meant to him. Are you sure I can't get you something to eat, ma'am? Some cheese, maybe, or a bit of cake? <laughs> no, thank you, Mary. Really. Shall I sit with you for a while? I could bring down a bit of sewing. You're very kind. No, thank you. If I'm to spend my evenings alone from now on, I might as well get used to it. Very good, ma'am. Dinner is served, my lord. Oh! Are you ill, Grandfather? Ill? Certainly not. Just a touch of gout, that's all. Oh, that's too bad. Do you suffer from it a lot, Grandfather? Oh, well, massively little, as it happens. But I have it tonight. Oh, then lean on me, sir. I can take the weight. Are you sure? Oh, quite, sir. Very well. Are you certain that you can manage this? Yes, sir. You know, Cedric, you must never make an offer of help that you haven't thought through. I won't, sir. Well, I never. He didn't give up then. Not he. Struggled right on till the old man was in his chair. He's a plucky little chap, I'll say that for him. Oh, well, I don't envy him. Poor little beggar. And all the time longing for his ma. Doesn't seem right at his age. Yeah, take this. Sarah! What are you doing here, getting in everyone's way? Here, Lucy girl, you take it. You don't wear your coronet all the time, then? No. Not very becoming to me. Oh. Only Mr. Hobbs said you always wore it. But I guess you have to take it off sometimes. For instance, when you want to put on your hat. Stands to reason. Yes, I take it off occasionally. He must be real proud of your house, sir. Must I? I'll say. It's about the finest place I ever saw. And the biggest. It's awful big for just two of us to live in, isn't it? It's certainly quite large enough for two. Do you find it too large? No. Only... I was just thinking we might want someone else for company sometimes. And there sure is room. Found what? Wine. My mother's house seems pretty big to me, too, sir. And she's all alone in that one. Well, tell me if she's not comfortable. Oh, she's comfortable right enough. But, well, you know, all on her own. I suppose you think you're very fond of your mother. 